Hi, Jason Solomon here. I wanted to share an exercise on range and developing a larger range. Uh, I'm going to be using a bass trombone, but this can apply to uh, most brass instruments. Uh, might even go further than that, but we'll just stick in the brass world for now. Uh, this is an exercise that I do pretty much daily. And uh, I have a previous video called Embouchure and Range and Development. Uh, highly recommend you check that out. Three things I talk about in that video is that, number one, in order to play this instrument, sorry, this instrument, bass trombone, um, I need a big range, that would be number one. Number two is I need to be able to navigate through that range uh, quite freely. And number three is it all needs to sound easy. It just needs to sound easy and beautiful. A lot of times we get caught up in uh, wider leaps and runs that go up you know, over multiple octaves, and it just uh, starts sounding uh, rough. It starts sounding inconsistent. It starts sounding tense in some ways. And so one way that I kind of smooth that out is taking little five-note groupings. And so I'm going to go through that now. So today we're going to do the key of E-flat. So I'm going to start down on E-flat, which I like to call E-flat 1, also known as pedal E-flat. I'm going to put on some pitch. I'm going to put on some time. I'm going to stand on my wobble board. Uh, I use all three things pretty regularly. Uh, you can look up. Uh, I'll try to post a link of uh, the wobble board board video, and there's also pitch and time videos to where I kind of go into those concepts. But for now, we'll just run with those. Uh, so I'm going to take the first five notes of the E flat scale, starting at pedal E flat, and then that brings me up to a pedal B flat. Then from there, I'm going to play five notes starting at B flat going up. It takes me up to the F. I'm going to go from F up to C. You'll get the idea. So. Okay, so I just played little five note groupings all the way up the E flat major scale, starting on pedal E flat all the way up to high E flat. I call it E flat one all the way up to E flat five. So in each of these five note groupings, I allow my face, my embouchure, whatever, I'm not thinking about any of that. All I'm thinking about is getting the sound to be as smooth and consistent as possible within those five notes. And you'll notice, as if you go back and watch the video, that if I play the first five notes, pedal E flat up to pedal B flat, 
that pedal B flat is probably going to have a certain sound and a certain feel to it because it is the highest note of a group of notes that I started from pedal E flat. When I then start on pedal B flat and go up to F, the way in which my face gravitates towards wanting to play that note is going to be different because now it's in a different context. It is now the lowest note of a higher lick. And so my face is probably going to make some tiny changes and my embouchure is going to be set up a little differently. Again, I'm not thinking about that actively, but I, I recognize that that's what is you know, implicitly going on in this moment. So I play it a couple of times, and then things kind of slowly gravitate towards uh, a nice feel, a nice setting, and a nice sound. I'm only concerned with the sound. Then uh, that brings me up to F. So then I do the same thing from F up to C. And again, the way that I play the F when it is the highest note starting from pedal B flat is different than the way that I play the F when it is the lowest note that leads up to C. And so each one of those five note groupings gets sorted out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to combine two groupings at a time, and so I'm going to play nine note groupings that now overlap a little more. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so now that I've done groupings of nine notes going up and down the range of the instrument, now I'm going to combine three groups of those five chunks. And notice there's one note that overlaps with each of the groups. Uh, so now it's going to be 13 notes, but I call it three groups of five, or three by five. Starting on pedally flat, working my way up, and now there's more overlap between the groups. And that's a concept that's going to come back with things like embouchure. Most of us have shifting. In fact, I would argue that all of us shift. Some of us don't think we shift, but we actually do shift. We may just not be consciously aware of it. The way that embouchure works is that it's going to, that your face is going to come up with whatever it needs to come up with to make the notes sound right. It's very goal oriented because we don't have cognitive control over all of the musculature and how it all coordinates, you know, act, action together. We don't have conscious control over that. Uh, we can say words and we can speak and we enunciate, but we don't think about what our lips and what our mouth and what our tongue does to make the sounds happen. We just at some point uh, started copying people and then we have those sounds and we make it sound a certain way, but it's all about the goal as opposed to the, uh, the process to which that happens. Same thing's going to happen with embouchure. Now that the groups are overlapping a little more, uh, each way that I have to play certain notes is going to be dependent upon the context to which it's placed. So here are three groups of five.
Okay, three groups. Now I'm going to move on to four groups. And as you can see, four groups creates even more overlap between the embouchures. Each uh, little part of the exercise is on a single breath. So when I do these groupings of four, that's on a single breath. And the next grouping of four, on a single breath. Anytime we breathe, we have the opportunity to pull the horn away from our face. And what that can do is that can then give us the opportunity to subconsciously uh, make tiny adjustments to where the horn, you know, where the mouthpiece is sitting on the face and how the embouchure is all formed and whatnot. I don't want to think about these things consciously, but anytime I take a breath, I have to concede that probably some adjustments are being made because the environmental constraint of the mouthpiece sitting on the face has been removed. So my face will unconsciously want to gravitate towards something that it thinks is a little better suited for that you know, particular note. But what I'm trying to do is smooth out a larger range of notes, so I've got to figure out a way to put that all together. So here we go. This is groupings of four, five notes. Four by five is guess I want to call it. So here is four by five. No 
So it's not the greatest, it's still a little squirrely, but for the sake of brevity, this video is already going to be like a half an hour, so I'm going to move on to the next one. Again, not great, but it's better, it's getting smoother, and every time I do it, it gets smoother, so it all depends on how much progress you want to make in one day. Okay, so now let's do five by five, so five groups of five. sake of brevity let's just move it along uh, I'll start I'll go up probably to the C and then I'll come back down Thank you. 
little screwed up there because I don't have all the grouping of five. Okay, so that's gonna be the, um, I guess the limit for now, but again, if I took five or 10 more minutes, I might be able to smooth out and get up to the D and get up to the E flat. So now I'm gonna start on the A flat and play down. try six. I probably won't be able to do the entire thing, but I think from pedally flat I can get six. Let's see. How much time do I have left? Perfect. So, I mean, just taking that briefly, you know, of an aside, that's better than what I was doing before I started working on exercises, you know, to improve my range. So that's actually pretty good. Um, just for sake of brevity, let's, I'll start in the A-flat work down. Over time, I do larger and larger chunks. Eventually, I want to get to the point where I can play all the way to the bottom, all the way to the top. Today was E flat. Tomorrow will be E. The next day, I'll spend the entire context of F. And that's going to change where the range is because I can only go up to certain. I don't go a much above uh, F5. So, for example, on the day where I get to G flat, I don't go all the way up to that last grouping. I'm actually, I, I go up to C flats. So the range changes every day. Um, I find that this is really helpful because it smooths out the embouchure and it makes it so I can play more connected and I can just play a little bit more efficiently over larger ranges of the instrument. And one thought of embouchure is that if you have, let's say, like a lower embouchure and you have a higher embouchure, the more overlap that you can have you know, between those two embouchures by increasing the range of what each embouchure can do, then the more contexts that you will run into in the repertoire that you can navigate it just fine. You know, you breathe here, you breathe there, and you can make the changes that you need. Now again, this is all subconsciously or unconsciously processed. I, I cannot caution you enough. Do not think about what your face is doing. You'll run yourself into all sorts of convoluted problems. You'll create neurological pathways that have you forming associations and forming habits of, of thinking about certain things while you play, and you'll be in completely getting in the way of the body's ability to just naturally smooth things out. Your body knows what it's supposed to sound like. It has an impression, an image of sound. Let the body figure it out. I like coming up with exercises like this to just create that environmental constraint that forces my brain and body to just kind of figure it out on its own. So I hope you liked the video. Try it out. Let me know what you think. Hopefully you find improvement like I have, and thanks for watching.